Hello everybody, let's continue with the discussion of the, uh, <coughs> uh, what do you call the mathematical properties of arithmetic mean. And this is the last property we're going to discuss, okay, then we'll, we'll proceed with the examples and we will discuss a little about weighted arithmetic mean as well, okay. This property says that the sum of square of deviations of a set of values is the least when measured from x bar. Now, if uh, all right, the square of deviations, the square of sum of square of deviations means if a is some real number r and if we define uh, what is the proper way to let's not say A, let's say T, okay, just for convenience. And let us define S as a function of T to be given by summation I runs from 1 to N, XI minus T squared. Okay, then this function, which depends on t, is said to be the sum of square of deviations, okay, of a set of values. This is a set of values, n belonging to z plus, as before, and x1, x2 are the set of given observations, okay, belonging to r. So we need to show that if t is equal to x bar, where well, x bar is the mean of these observations, and then the value of st is minimum. Okay, the value of st is minimum. So for this, for this, uh, we're going to use the method of calculus. You need to know about calculus if you want to discuss the proof of this property. Okay, the principle of maxima and minima. That's what we're going to use from differential calculus. Okay. Now let's see, quadratic function, right? Power series, finite power series means a, what do you call it, uh, a polynomial function. And since the power is two, it's a quadratic function. Okay, it's a quadratic function. So this is a polynomial function in T. So we can differentiate it as many times as we want, uh, let's differentiate it twice for now. Now, since the derivatives have a linearity property, that is, if d by dx of y1, yn, then we can write uh, what do you call it? dy1 by dx, where each of these are functions of x, okay, like this. Like this. So basically, in a compact form, uh, d by dx of the sum is equal to the sum of derivatives okay so if we differentiate it we can just take this differential operator inside the summation sign so let's differentiate it differentiating with respect to t differentiating twice with respect to t twice with respect to t Okay, we can say s dash t is equal to the, I'm going to use this directly, okay, it's actually d by dt of this thing right here, this thing right here, so that this is equal to summation i equal to 1 to n d by dt of this 
Okay, now let's just focus on the derivative. Okay, let's just focus on the derivative. And then first we use the power rule and we are going to use the power rule and the chain rule first. Let's see, uh, this is equal to summation i equals to 1 to n power rule 2 times xi minus t, okay, and what next? We need to differentiate xi minus t with respect to t so that we get minus 1 xi, any value xi is independent of t or we can say that uh, if we expand it x1 and xn they are fixed values okay they are given observations so they are constants any given value of xi is a constant okay so the derivative of xi is 0 minus the derivative of t is 1 so we get minus 1 over here so we can basically take uh, this to be how much is this minus 2 times summation xi minus t okay xi minus t now for the second derivative we're going to use this thing now we have a constant so it remains as it is we can take this differential operator inside the summation sign so we're going to get d by dt of xi minus t this is equal to minus 2 times summation i equals to 1 to n the derivative of xi is 0 so this is just minus 1 which is equal to 2 times summation i runs from 1 to n 1 and summation i runs from 1 to n 1 is equal to n so this is 2 n okay now for maximum or minimum values we need to set the first derivative equal to 0 so if we set this equal to 0 then we're going to get uh, this thing to be equal to 0 so minus 2 summation i runs from 1 to n xi minus t i runs from 1 to n xi minus t is equal to 0 this is equal to now minus 2 is not equal to 0 so this will be equal to 0 this is summation i runs from 1 to n xi minus t does not involve i so t can be taken out from the summation sign i runs from 1 to n uh, how much is this 1 okay 0 so this means this is equal to n so nt is equal to summation i runs from 1 to n xi which means that t is equal to 1 over n summation i runs from 1 to n xi which is equal to the mean of the given observations okay now let's put this value in s double dash t so s double dash x bar will be equal to twice n because this is a constant function okay so this is twice n and since n belongs to a set of positive integers this is greater than zero all right this is greater than zero so uh, at t equal to x bar s dash t will be zero okay s dash t will be zero it's actually like this s dash t will be equal to zero and at t equal to x bar s double dash t is greater than zero so by the principle of maxima and minima that we've discussed in differential calculus we've studied in differential calculus it follows that the value of st the value of 
this function, okay, the sum of square of deviations, will be minimum when t is taken to be x bar. All right, that is what we were supposed to prove. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. This much for this video.